Hello, everyone. My name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan of the United States. Our coverage area in the area of business, education, and technology in the civilian office that we hold here in Boston and Springfield is uh, covering, uh, let's see, it's uh, the Middle East, it's Asia, it's Europe, it's Russia and Latin America. And we welcome our United States visitors as well. My name is David Ewan, so let's begin. Tonight, we're going to talk about we have an enemy and that enemy is Satan. So the question is what to do about it. And that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to bring our attention to Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. And Ephesians chapter six, verse 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So what does that mean? Okay, so our struggle is not against man because we're designed to get along with one another. There's an influence that is making it so that we do struggle against each other. So we have rulers of this land that are designed to be the rulers of this land. We know that in Romans chapter 13, verse one through three, where God puts the rulers in place because it is of his choice to go against those rulers, you're going against the will of God uh, and you can be judged uh, for that. So our enemy is of the dark, not of the light. Um, the light is God, the dark is not God. And who is that? That is Satan. So what we're talking about is a spiritual force um, against good and evil. And so we, in our carnal flesh are caught in the middle. So let's talk about what that means. Tonight's agenda is strategies for the enemy it, uh, that they use to keep you defeated. Um, the next one is how we're going to stand firm in our faith. That will give us the power. Um, we're going to do a review of taking up the armor of God and winning. Uh, then we're going to talk about how you can use your spiritual authority. And yes, you do have a spiritual authority in any situation. And then we'll talk about the power of prayer. So what we're talking about is a follow up to what I read when I told you that we have an enemy and we read about it in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. What we're understanding is number one, there is an enemy and number two, there is something that we can do about it. So let's talk about the strategy that the enemy uses to keep you defeated. See, one way to fight an enemy is to understand the enemy. So I'm going to tell you about some four basic strategies that the enemy uses to keep you defeated, how the enemy beats you and that you lose. Let me tell you about the first strategy. And this is in scripture. I'll tell you what it is. The first one is the enemy instills fear. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the scripture reads, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay, so keep in mind that God has not given us fear. So if you have fear, it is not from God, it is from Satan. So if you have fear, recognize it from Satan. Do not recognize it from God. Then if you can recognize it from Satan, then you can do something about it. And we're going to talk about that. Let's talk about the second strategy. The enemy lies to you. The enemy lies to you. And in John chapter eight, verse 44, John chapter eight, verse 44, he is a liar and the father of lies. I'll say that again. He is a liar and the father of lies. That means Satan wants you to believe something other than what is true. What is true is you have a hope, you have a future and you have a destiny. Does Satan want you to believe that? No, because he wants to kill, steal and destroy 
all that you have. So know this, that you have a positive future and that the enemy lies to you because as in John chapter 8, verse 44, the scripture says, he is a liar and the father of all lies. That's the second strategy. Let me tell you about the third strategy, the third strategy. The enemy tempts you to sin. What does that mean? The enemy tempts you to sin. The enemy tries to get you to go in the wrong direction. The enemy tries to get you to go down a dark path. The enemy tries to get you to do wrong. See the script, the scripture, John chapter one, verse 13, I should say James. The scripture in James chapter one, verse 13 says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone else. You see, God gave us free will. We have the choice to do what is right, and we have the choice to do what is wrong. So we don't have to believe that we're being forced into anything. We have to make a choice to do what's right. Through the principles and teaching of the Bible, we learn the difference between right and wrong. We're not forced into doing anything right. We're not forced into doing anything wrong. We are guided by the light, which God shines to do what is right. We do have the choice, if we choose to, to do what is wrong, but we're never forced to do what's wrong. And that's what Satan wants you to believe. Satan wants you to believe that you're being corralled, if you will, to go in the wrong direction, making you believe it's the right direction. So remember this, you are never being forced into anything. That's the strategy number three. Now, strategy number four, this is how the enemy uses to keep you defeated. The enemy stirs up pride. And in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10, pride leads to conflict. The pride that if instilled in our heart, that can control us in a way that we think we're better than what the right way is. If we feel that we're better than what the right way is, then we will push away the correct way. We might receive correction and instruction, which could be beneficial. We could receive constructive criticism, which could point us in the right direction. But if we have pride, that will block all of that off. So what I've talked about are four strategies that the enemy uses to keep you defeated. Now you're aware of them. You don't have to be controlled by them. So let's talk about three things. I'm gonna talk about three things to do while you're standing firm in the faith, okay? It involves praising, praying, and patience. Praising, praying, and patience. To stand firm in faith, you have to do it by praising. Who do you praise? You stay in faith when you're praising God, not the enemy. If you continue to praise God, then your focus is on God. That means your focus is on the light and not in the dark. So stand firm in faith by praising. Number two, Stand firm in faith by praying for others. Stand firm in faith by praying for others. When you pray for others, that eliminates pride. It puts you in the same shoes as other people. It puts you in community and fellowship with the church body and with God's children. It keeps you praying for others so that you're not in communion with the enemy. You don't want to be in communion with the enemy. You don't want to be part of Satan's society. What you want to do is to pray for others 
who are in turn the children of God. That's number two. Let's go to number three. Stand firm in faith by being patient. You have desires. They may be good desires. They may be related to a calling that God has on your life. But everything is according to God's timing. So you stand firm in faith by being patient, by waiting. There's the right thing to do to do at the right time. If you do the right thing, but at the wrong time, that can be detrimental. Timing is everything because it relates to having all of the pieces and all of the situations and all of the people involved connected like Lego blocks in the right order. When all of the elements are in place, then that is when a blessing can occur. So stand firm in faith by being patient. Let's talk more. We're going to provide a reminder of what we mean when we say the armor of God. And I'll do a quick review by reading Ephesians chapter 14, verse 17. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. And the scripture reads, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I just read from Ephesians chapter six, verse 14 through 17. This is what we mean when we talk about the armor of God. And in our previous episodes, we have talked about the armor of God. So I won't add more discussion here. But I will talk about ways to take up the armor of God and when. Okay, and I will tell you about four things. The first thing is to know your enemy and win. The only way you can defeat an adversary is if you know the adversary. If you don't know what you're fighting, you don't know how to battle it, and therefore you don't know how to win, okay? So first of Peter chapter five, verse eight says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. See, the, the thing about your adversary, the enemy, is the enemy never takes a day off, never takes a minute off. You need to be on alert at all times. Even when you're sleeping. That's why you need to pray before you go to sleep and pray again after you wake up. My wife and I do that. Before we go to bed, we go, we pray. And then when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do is we pray together. Okay, let's do number two. Take up the sword of the spirit and win. So I'll read Ephesians chapter six, verse 17 as a reminder. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So what do I mean by the word of God? Well, the word of God is the promise of God. And the promise of God are the principles and the teachings that God has in the Bible that explains to us the difference between right and wrong and what eternal salvation is. There's a lot more to that. But when we understand the difference between right and wrong, then we know what is of the light which means God, and we know what is of the dark, which, which is Satan. And so when we are able to study the Bible and understand the true meaning of it, then the twisted words that Satan uses to try to interpret the Bible to his benefit cannot be used against us. 
So we can use the principles and the teachings to stand on a higher ground and not be defeated. That's number two. Number three, take the shield of faith and win. And I'll read from Ephesians chapter six, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery dots, darts, I should say, of the wicked one. You, you see, we're always under attack by the enemy. And many people who do not have the shield of faith succumb to the failure and loss and destruction because the enemy wins. But if you have your faith and you go through trials and tribulations, and you will, and they're not intended to be easy, but if you keep your faith knowing that God has your back, then you are protected. That is the shield of faith. Let's talk more. Number four, stand firm and win. Stand firm and win. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 14 says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. What that means is to be prepared and ready at all times. God provides the principles in the teaching that prevents us into falling into a ditch. If you continue to go on a regular church weekly Bible study and you attend a regular church uh, service, then you will be able to receive through spiritual guidance what you should and should not be doing and how you can protect yourself from the evil one. It is absolutely necessary that you do not fight the fight alone. It must be done in a community. And that is why in the book of Acts that the Bible has us in communion with one another. That's why we call it the body of Christ. So that we are not alone. By not being alone, we're even stronger. Because we're stronger, we have a spiritual authority. So what I will tell you now is how to use your spiritual authority in any situation. The first one is use your authority for physical protection. Physical protection. That's number one. In Psalms 91 verse 10, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. You will be physically well if you ask for the covering, the favor, and the provision from your God, Jesus, from your Lord and Savior. Again, you're asking for the covering, the favor, and the provision so that your health is maintained in excellence in the way that God has chosen it to be. God doesn't choose for you to be ill or to be plagued. God chooses you to be well. And we know that through Psalms 91, verse 10. Number two, use your authority to drive out sickness. And in Psalms 91, 10, it also says, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. Again, I say that again. Psalms 91, 10. If you are in the midst of getting sick or there's a risk of you getting sick, you can decree and make a declaration that sickness be rebuked and that it be banished. You can spiritually fight off sickness and in turn, the Lord will give you this, the guidance and the revelation, the wisdom, the understanding of what you need to do to prevent that. 
It may be something that you do. It might be something that you take. But whatever it is, seek that guidance. Because when you declare that sickness is driven out of you, you're also given the power and the resources to drive that sickness out. Number three, use your authority to cast out demons. That's right. Satan has his minions. Use your authority to cast out demons. And in Mark chapter uh, 16, verse 17 says, they will cast out demons in my name. So you can rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. You can cast out the enemy that's in your house. You can ask for your angels of protection on the pillars of your house in Jesus' name to protect your household from, from the roof to the basement, from the front to the back, to the side, to the other side, that the angels of protection have cast out the demons so that even when you sleep at night, you are protected in Jesus' name. Number four, you can use your authority to subdue the weather. And in Mark chapter four, verse 39 says, when he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was great calm. You see, it's more than just the weather. When we talk about weather, it's, it's those situations of unease, like a storm coming. It can be an emotional storm. You can cast that out. Remember, these emotional storms are not of God. They're of Satan. You know, Satan wants you to believe that these emotional storms are for a purpose and they're beneficial. God did not put that in your life. So you have the authority to subdue the weather. The next one, number five, use your authority for finances. And in Colossians chapter two, verse 15, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. And that's in Colossians chapter two, verse 15. You see, our finances is our harvest. You know, when the Bible was written by God thousands of years ago, it was at a time of an economy being of agriculture. So we are focused on our harvest. We are focused on our baskets. Those are our finances. And we can pray for prosperity. We can pray for benefit. We can ask for this. And we do this by asking for the Lord's favor and for his provision and for his covering. And through his principles and teachings that we see in the Bible and that we learn from the Bible, and also that we receive revelation from the Holy Spirit, we can be instructed as to what to do so that our financial harvest can be in abundance. And we can ask for that in Jesus' name. Very good. So now I'm going to talk about the power of prayer. What I've been talking about tonight is what you can do and what kind of power you have. That power comes from God. And, and we know it because we communicate with God through the Holy Spirit and through prayer. <coughs> and so I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 18, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 18, verse 20. And the scripture reads, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. I'm going to say that again, because this is exactly what we've been talking about. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am the ambassador in chains, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So even our spiritual leaders are asking for guidance. So what's the meaning of Ephesians chapter six, verse 18 through 20? Number one, 
be alert of attacks. Know that it's constant, continuous, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Number two, pray for yourself, but also pray for others. Because when you pray for others, it's those people that are stronger, they can help protect you as well. Because we're part of a body of Christ. We help each other. And number three, study the Bible. But it's more than just reading the book. Attend a Bible session. Attend the church service. Get guidance from um, a spiritual leader. But most importantly, number four, be guided by the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is the gift. It's that little voice inside of you that knows the difference between right and wrong and also the direction towards right. See, the Holy Spirit is the light. It is not the dark. The Holy Spirit is the light within the dark so that you see a path towards what is right. Follow the Holy Spirit. So what have we talked about today? We talked about the strategies the enemy uses to keep you defeated. Then we talked about standing firm in faith. Then we talked about ways to take up the armor of God and win. Then we talked about how to use your spiritual authority in any situation. And then we talked about the power of prayer. So that is my discussion tonight. And the topic tonight, we talked about we have an enemy and what to do about it. My name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan from the United States. Our coverage area is Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and Russia, and Latin America. We also welcome our visitors from the United States. My name is David Ewan, and this is Inspire.